And now it's uh, my pleasure to present the next speaker, uh, Professor Yalchin Efendi from Texas A&M University, United States. Okay, so let me start by thanking the organizer for inviting me and for organizing this ni nice conference, continuing this organization. So I'm a computational math mathematician, and I work on, um, we'll talk a little bit about mu multi-scale modeling, macro-scale modeling. modeling. I, my permanent place is at Texas A&M University, but also I'm a lead scientist for the mega, mega grant that is uh, funded by a Russian Ministry of Education. I, I know its name just exchanged, but uh, and it is in Northeastern Federal University. <coughs> So actually, this I will start uh, uh, with, uh, with with some pictures uh, that is uh, rock at different resolutions. So what you this is normal, yeah. Okay. Uh, so the, the rock at different resolutions. So what I'd like to actually to point out here that uh, if you see the rock at different resolution, we we have no scale separation because what I'm interested to develop macro scale model when we don't have a scale separation. Actually, we saw some of these examples in the talk of uh, Professor Sev Sev Sevastyanov. Uh, <coughs> and here, basically, it's, uh, I'd like to, 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 to show how we can do it numerically and in, in a rigorous way. So what I'd like to, what I'm basically trying to, to, to show here that we have this three rock at different resolution. And when you look at the heterogeneities, you don't see like a clear scale separation. In fact, you see some type of uh, channels and tortuosity. Right? So, uh, <coughs> so this is actually just, uh, just a basic slide. It shows that we have, we have a function with scale separation, what you see like uh, one and two. But what would be interested here, basically modeling materials or in, in mostly fluid flows in, in heterogeneous media when there is no scale separation. And what, what I mean by no scale separation, basically, if you look at this picture, this is diffusion coefficient, for example. A black is a low diffusion, white is high. And if you look at the sizes of these white blobs, white uh, ellipses of different geometry shapes, you can see all kinds of sizes here. So what's also very important that there should be, I mean, th there is also a high contrast, which is, uh, which is very important in this multi-scale modeling in general, whether it's a fluid flow or elasticity. And to conceptualize this, you can think of you have a domain and you throw, for example, inclusion, sin and different, uh, sin inclusion of different length, and they have a very high conductivity or diff diffusivity. And this way you create this, this, uh, this uh, high contrast, multi-scale media where there is no scale separation. Okay, so what I'd like to do for now, maybe more, more concretely, for example, we have a diffusion equation or heat equation, and what you see here, this is a conductivity, diffusivity, or it could be different process. Uh, the blacks, uh, uh, f uh, in this case, are fractures, but it, it, it can be just a sin inclusion. And it has very high conductivity. In other words, K is very high in black, and let's say K is one here. So what I'd like to do, I'd like to set a coarse, I'd like to set a grid. I will call it a coarse grid because it's coarser with respect to the heterogeneities. So each grid basically does not resolve the physical scale. In other words, inside a grid block, I have a lot of scales. But also, what is important, this is coarse grid does not resolve the contrast. So what, mean, what, I, what I mean by this, that if I look inside each coarse grid block, the jump in a diffusion coefficient uh, can be much larger than the I inverse of the mesh size. Right? So this is basically, so in other words, if, you, if you're thinking more traditional, maybe th if this is, your, this, is your, this is not a grid, you have a macro point, right, macroscopic point, Basically, distance between macro scale points and the contrast, basically, contrast can be much bigger than the distance between macro scale points. This is what's, what basically will have, will make us to introduce additional macro scale variables in order to, to come up with a, to show that we have a good accuracy in this macro scale model, which I. So, so again, I'd like to come back to this contrast issue and a numerical because this is very important. So, if I look at this equation, first equation like heat equation or something like so so i'm trying to do it to s to, to do some type of macro scale model right you can say 
I mean, there's a lot of homogenization approaches. People try to do scale separation. They relay their work by stochastic homogenization. Right? <coughs> so what, what, new, what new can I do here? But uh, the, pro the issue is that we look at it from the numerical point of view. So if you look at it from PDE point of view, from differential equation point of view, I can't say high contrast because I don't know high, I mean high contrast with respect to what, right? Because at a PDE there is no, the original equation have no mesh, no macro scale point. So basically this is what I like to emphasize because this is, this is, this is numerical modeling and this is what uh, you'll see very different models at, the, at a macro scale. <coughs> So what I mean b by contrast here, so let's say this is diffusion varies between A and B. Let's say A fixed, B is high. Basically, this B is much larger than this, that this the inverse reciprocal of the distance between mac macroscopic points, uh, for example. <coughs> okay, so, so this is actually a coarse grid model. It, it's at the at the center of many things. So I, 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 I'm going to talk mostly at the one thing, but I like to mention some other. For example, uh, what's, uh, what, oops, how do I go back? Back here. So coarse grid basically at the center. In, uh, so first, uh, let me just go over there. So for coarse grid model, right, this is first a little bit I mentioned. So we, we, we want to write a macro scale model at this, at this computational grid. So this is one, uh, one uh, one thing, right? The second thing, if you can write this model, basically, if you can write a good model, you can r uh, use it for solvers. Basically, uh, numerical solvers, the way they work, they, 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 they course some problem to some coarse grid and then solve analytically and then try to correct the solution. So if you don't have a good solution, basically, you won't convert. This is a mathematical fact. <coughs> so, so then you can do basically, with, I will also say, but we can use it for the temporal dynamics. So we saw in the talk of uh, Professor Smirnov uh, stiff dynamics, basically what's happened, high contrast will, 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 bring a, uh, will bring a stiff dynamics and you can, if you have a coarse model, you can do only few degrees implicitly, for example, and the rest explicitly. And then, of course, inversion. So I'd like just to maybe briefly say one slide for each and then talk about macro scale model. This is so this is a coarse grid model at first glance. So, <coughs> so I will do maybe two two level of first glance because uh, the, the 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 theory behind maybe a little bit more very numerical and maybe 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 a bit confusing. So basically, if you look at this diffusion equation, macro scale model that I will I will obtain. So if I look at this diffusion equation, a macro scale a typical macro scale model here looks like this. Right, I have a this is a U is a pressure, for example, I have average pressure for each coarse grid block, and then I have a similar, I have a basic equation look like this. Like if I use effective medium theory, so it will be a K star, gradius star, which means that uh, for each coarse grid block, I have a one average pressure. But in fact, if you wanna have a rigorous model and show convergence for any media, what will happen, we need to identify some macroscopic variables. So it's not just one, average pressure, there may be two or three, depending in, in this case how many connected channels you have. Right? And then this is basically, I introduce macro scale variable here, un, maybe take one, unj, where n is what I call continuous, so it's a, it's a macro scale variable. We will find them through subspectral problem, and j is a coarse block. And then in addition, what's happening, if I, if in, if I write it as a, in a classical effective medium theory, basically, uh, one block only talks to the neighbor in a, in a, in a standard finite uh, difference way. But here, block not talk to the, the, you don't talk to the neighbor, but you talk to the far neighbor, so several blocks. So only in this case, basically, we can show that this reduced, this macro scale model is close to the fine grid model. And accuracy is, is, a, is, is H. H is a mesh size and C is independent of any uh, physics, basically scales and contrast. So this gives you basically good macro scale model. So this is actually a, um, this is actually a, qu uh, this is a just a <coughs> diffusion equation, though this can be used for different equations. I don't have time maybe to show many applications. In fact, that's what we do uh, with, uh, with a, with a uh, 
with my group in Yakutsk. There are many young researchers, and we apply this for different different application. And I picked just one of them, just to say, for example, and I come back to this. This is actually I picked the reason because this is a joint work with. Elena Grekova, we almost finished. So basically, the same thing like you can use in different model. In this case, for example, we use it for the Kosara uh, media. So it has a two equation for displacement and a micro rotation. And <coughs> and I will come back to this. Basically, you will have a similarly each 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 macro point you define several macro displacement and macro rotations and so on and couple it. Uh, maybe just come back to this in a bit later. So this is, maybe I'm going to skip basically what I mentioned, that if you have a good coarse grid solver, you can you use it for the, for, the, for the numerical solvers, not in a way just another solver, but in fact only, but like the solvers with the, with the coarse grid spaces, what I will show you, we, we prove, and these are basically, uh, uh, the way to do it that uh, when you do the solvers, you, you find a coarse grid solution and you go back and forth, you try to correct it. So those are each, each of them called iteration and each iteration expensive because you go around, solve little problems. So I computed a say coarse grid solution I call UMS and then I take somehow this residual and then, and then solve this correction. And the way correction goes, we go to coarse grid, solve local problem, add, and this is expensive procedure. So number of iteration is very important. So it was known that number of iteration depends on contrast. And then this was actually one of the work that we, one of the earlier work that we proved that if you use the spaces, which I will show you, the number of iteration is independent of the of the contrast. So it makes the solvers more or less optimal. So this is basically a little bit on a, on a, on a this is this is this forcing I want to show. This is a what we call it, I call it partial explicit method. <coughs> yeah. So if you use it, uh, uh, so, so similarly what's happened that if we have a dynamic, if you in a dynamical problems, uh, there is a, because of the high contrast or in this region, in this black connected channels, we get a stiff system, stiff. But this stiffness is only like in the, it's only in some region. So what, what can be done, for example, we can use a splitting algorithm, so we can take uh, solutions divided into two parts, one that macro scale and one is what's left. Like, And then we, we just do this, this, this is like a, some type of a coarse grid solution, a like macro scale solution. We do this implicitly because this is the one that has a fast dynamics, but we do this explicitly. So this is basically explicitness here is not just to save computational cost, but it's also the way to observe the dynamics, right? Because implicit methods usually kill the high high frequency, so you don't see what's happened. This is, and this is. I mean, you, we we need this type of spaces because if we start proving something like this, we can we show that if this this for example this scheme is stable, if the second second space has this condition, and this condition is more or less mean that the second space shouldn't have any contrast or any scale because this is a standard condition. What you see in a for for problem without uh, without multi scale, and so basically so the only way you can do it, so you need to have a V1 take all the high contrast, all the strong multi scale components. Okay. So I'm gonna not do that, but this is uh, you can because we need to have a right course model, right macro scale model before we do inversion. So this is also an inversion. So let me now go back talk about this multi-scale. So in this slide, basically, uh, what I write, let me go here, maybe, effective medium theory. So you know, in effective medium theory, the way it's applied, for example, in computational uh, mechanics, or, or the way we do it. So you, you take a, we take a coarse block. This is computational block. So what you see inside the, inside the domain, this is a media. So again, this is, say, white is high, black is low, diffusivity. So, so we compute effective property for each block by solving some local problem or any other procedure. So, so, so it's it's it's, uh, it's basically kind of clear that it's not it's not enough to. So basically, by doing that, we take all the information inside a coarse block and compress it in this case into this two by two tensor, two by two matrix. So this is not sufficient because there's much more there, and we need to have a way to find the. Uh, minimal information that can give us a uh, reasonable accuracy. <coughs> so
So now this idea is actually, that's why we call it multi-continuum because they have been used in mechanics uh, quite a bit. For example, in, fra in a flow in fractured media, works bar and blood, <coughs> and then there was a, there were work war and root and so on in a different way. So mechanics basically uh, community in a, in a sense that at that macro, macro scale point, for example, this is flow in fractured media. So in, at every macro scale point, we, uh, so we cannot average homogenized fracture with the fractures are high conductivity and a background low. If we homogenize, we get a low conductivity, which means nothing flow. So it's, that's why you keep them separate. So at every basically macro point, you can have a two, two macro scale variable. And then, then here basically, What's typically done, and in, in a much more general case, is uh, researchers write some, uh, they, they write equation of uh, mass balance, moment, mo momentum balance, and so on. <coughs> but, but of course, this is, uh, our approach is different because we want to basically have a way to identify this macro scale variable and prove the convergence. So we, we, ha we, have a, we have a right macro scale model, in other words, because <coughs> Often, uh, the, uh, this is this is not obvious. Often, so which I mean more will be clear later. So, what's a starting point? This is a starting point of of our method. So, this is basically doing doing Galerkin methods with some multi-scale basis. So, we we heard Galerkin method in a previous talk uh, by Professor Vavilov. Uh, so, so basically, it's a similar similar uh, idea, except that this basis function here. So, so I have this domain. I divide it in a computational grid. This is a, again, this is this is a coarse grid. In other words, these red dots are red blobs are are variation in conductivity. But instead of using a hat function, I, I basically solve the local problem somehow, group them. This is what's shown here. And 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 do the multi-scale basis here. So so at every course node, I have one multi-scale basis, and what you see here is a Galerkin, what's called Galerkin projection. So this Galerkin projection it shows that it's similar if you did uh, just a standard effective medium theory in a sense. You know, it's uh, basically one to one if you have a one basis. So if I have a one basis at uh, at if I have a one basis at every node, one basis at every node, and do this, you can show that this is this this is what yeah this is basically more 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 or less a classical effective medium theory, <coughs> and this is what basically, it, in other words, the basis plays a role as a as a macro scale variable. So we need to have a multiple we have to have a, some way to have a we have to have a way to define a multiple basis right and this is basically one example uh, in, in, in basically was it i guess 2009 or so when we started working and developing this stuff so so this shows that uh, one base is not enough in a sense if i have a like coarse grid block, I have a, in this case is a flow, so it's a flow, I have a high conductivity flow, Did you see these three channels crossing these blocks, right, and I cannot have one basis because I can, changing this boundary condition, I can make flow different in this, in these channels, and channels basically act independent, they don't see what's on the background, because they're, they, they're much stronger flows and background. No, but the main question, uh, one question comes for us because I'm, a, I'm more like a mathematician. So what, I, what, what, what is channel, right? Because is this, a, I mean, uh, th this was actually PowerPoint things which uh, overlay each other. No, that's why the slides sh a little bit. So, so basically, is this, if I do, if this is black high conductivity, I put something gray, is it a channel? Because I need to prove Convergence. I need to show that the method has an uh, order h accuracy right, at the end of the day. So that's why I <coughs> that's why this is this type. We need uh, we need more precise definition. So this is basically how the method will look like at the end. So we have a we'll have a uh, multiple basis. So we we have to have a way to define a multiple basis. So for each coarse grid block, previously we had a one basis right here. Now we need a multiple basis that represent this ma several macro scale variables. And then this basis turns out they can't be supported locally, so they have to go over several blocks. So that makes it 
slightly non-local connection. Only with such bases we can prove, and this is what makes this uh, uh, coarse grid model what we call multi non-local multi-continuum, because it's, uh, it's also non-local. But it's not global, but it's slightly non-local. So with, and the construction of this basis, now I'm going to talk in a little bit, uh, <coughs> uh, maybe uh, it may not be that easy if, you, if you're not a numerical computational person, but, but I will go over it a little bit. So basically, in this case, the way they work with this basis is that we go basically each, each course grid block, we solve some spectral problem that defines a this, this uh, define some basis, we pick, select some dominant mods, do some cutoff, and then we based on that we construct this basis. And, and that's why this cutoff, this eigenvalue comes here. And this is what basically guarantees us, uh, guarantees that we have enough uh, degrees of freedom that the, the convergence goes H, because this lambda could be much bigger than, than H. Lambda relate to contrast. So, so when we solve spectral problem, we basically identify the dominant region, and they, they have a, some uh, spectral value associated with them from small to high. And if we, if we don't cut off in the right place, this lambda will be much bigger than, this lambda minus one half will be much bigger than inverse H. So this is why this <coughs> is, is short. And of course, if you, if you put multiple bases in a Galerkin framework, this is what basically it shows. Like if I have a just a differential equation, if I write solution with a multiple bases, multiple bases and do Galerkin discretization, we get equations similar what you what we see for the multi-continuous. So you have a, we have every, we have a, every macroscopic variable talks to the neighbor, but not neighbor to the maybe next, not next, 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 next door neighbor, and so on. This is shows that uh, <coughs> how we get it. So let me skip this. So what I will talk mostly will be linear, but the same ideas actually we have done for nonlinear problems. It's in a nonlinear upscaling or nonlinear multiscale. Usually, uh, if, if we do it rigorously, then we can't use a linear basis. So we cannot write solution as a sum of linear basis. It's, it's the linear basis becomes some nonlinear map. So this is what I've written here, no linear basis. So, so in this case, basically, which I, I'm not going to probably talk about this. So the uh, idea is kind of similar, but we define macro scale variable, but then we define a nonlinear maps from this basically. So basically, if I have a <coughs> effective, for example, in a talk of, uh, of, of uh, first talk, uh, we had a say elastic, uh, so tensor, uh, the elastic tensor depends on, uh, on, on some parameters here, so nonlinear relation. So that relation basically, or in a fluid, what we do usually, relative permeability depends on, say, saturation. So it doesn't depend on macro scale saturation here, but it depends also on the macro scale saturation here. So basically, the nonlinear relation between the, uh, in, a, in, a, in a macro point depends also on a macro scale variables around that point. So this is what basically this approach is gives us. <coughs> uh, this is not, not uh, but then basically these computations get expensive. So here you need, we, we use quite a bit machine learning. There's a lot of, Deep learning, machine learning, we have done, used it. I'm going to skip this. So now I'm going to talk about this, uh, the, the, the main thing which I started in the beginning, this multi-scale, uh, what I call generalized multi-scale find element. So this is a first step of the how we build this, uh, this uh, I would say, the, the convergent uh, macro-scale model. <coughs> so this is, I'm doing it for basically for elliptic equation and show some examples. So we start with a coarse grid. This is a coarse grid, and this is what we call fine grid. So for each this macro coarse grid, first thing we generate some snapshots, what's called snapshot. So we solve, local, we solve many local problems, different boundary condition, and then we, do, we, do s we solve local spectral problem, and then we are based on a spectrum, we, we do like a from small to high, and a small one's dominant, the corresponding functions, we need to include in our in our in our macro scale space, uh, and then we do some cutoff. So in that sense, basically, what happens is when this coarse grid block, I can have a hundred by hundred fine grid blocks, right? Ten thousand degrees of freedom, but I, I choose maybe three or four. In this, chooses two of two and five, 
This is this after this spectral decomposition, and then we do the Galerkin projection. So since this is a numerical approach, and we do we do a lot of other things, we do, for example, error indicators where we can decide where to add, where not to add. But we can do what, I, what this is basically like solvers. But I would just focus on the, on the, on the macro scale model. Uh, this is snapshot, but basically the idea of snapshot is just solving local problems. So the way this uh, this local spectral problem also goes, ba basically, if we want to do it rigorously, so sometimes we don't do it rigorously, but if we do it sometimes rigorously, we, we take the arrow, we divide it into the sub-regions for each region omega. Then in each region, we basically, we have an error. This is u omega solution minus this mul multi-scale solution. We estimate it through some another bilinear form, uh, such that and we have to make sure this is this doesn't blow up. So for example, for multi-scale problem, we don't want to go to the higher derivative, right? Because then uh, uh, the, 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 the if, if I take, a, say, sine x over epsilon, I differentiate, become very high function. So I don't want to do that. So this is why this is this, this norm you have to choose, right? And then, then basically we do convergence and we get something called spectral convergence here. <coughs> but which is basically not enough for us because we need also H here. And that's where going to come this non-local part. Uh, this shows basically, this is more specific for flow maybe, also maybe I, in a sense that y this, this local spectral problem needs to be set up correctly. In a sense, basically if I have a many high conductivity. This is, this is when I say fracture, this is from the point of your flow. So from the point of your flow, fractures are basically high conductivity region. So if I have a coarse block, I have many fractures thrown like this. I need one basis to represent them. But if, if I have this channel, if I have a flow, they basically all act independent. I need seven bases. So in a sense, methods I, I, I will, I'm talking will kind of fail if I have many, many not, not uh, communicating high conductivity channels. But in, it, it will fail in a sense that it will just need many bases. It will be not effective already. It won't be macro scale model. But then if the fractures start talking to each other, it become a one basis. <coughs> Maybe I, a different example, for example, this is an example for the flow equation for two-phase flow, uh, where we use the, uh, there's a 10 by 10. So this is a, this is a simple example. This is a very many channels. We have a 10 by 10 coarse grid block. We look at, look at the, this is what's known as a two-phase flow uh, that used in petroleum industry. Uh, by the way, some of these methods uh, used, used uh, these methods used petroleum industry. In fact, the uh, first method, multi-scale fine element, it's, it's a it's it's a commercialized now now already commercialized, but with one basis <coughs> approach. So basically, uh, you in this case, uh, which it shows that if I use one basis, this is like like effective medium theory. The error is large. If I use two, then error already drops down. And then it's kind of plateaus because once you capture the main effect, error becomes, and then plateaus. And this is basically saturation for different, um, at some time instant for fine scale and multi scale. Actually, this is what I also mentioned. This is the this is the one other application uh, with uh, Cosera mechanics. Uh, <coughs> it's it's w I, I got into it was interesting because. The, the the micro rotation as a, as a, as a additional that uh, appears in this equation. So in this case, basically we have a the way we look at it, it's a two equation. Right? It's a couple. I mean, I have written it variational form because it, it, it but of course it may it may, it may not recognize, but it, this is the same. The, the steady state equations, and in this case, basically what we do. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. In this case, what we do, we uh, we have uh, we have the the, the d, uh, we have this te the tensor d, and so on. We assume heterogeneous. For example, we have uh, we assume that it's outside the holes, or we put something in the holes, or we do it like a heterogeneous Gaussian field. And these are the boundary conditions. For example, in this case, it basically shows that that the fine grid problem had this uh, 45,000 degrees of freedom, and course has only five, and errors are are basically. This this is a uh, micro rotation, fine course, and these are the displacement. I mean, uh, this is uh, the many application we've done. 
And this is some application, for example, uh, many applications in, in your code. For example, this is multi-scale pore elasticity in fractures. There's also, also 3D version. So this is, for example, I mean, in this case is sometimes, it's not often like we use, say, in this case, discontinuous Galerican for elasticity and build a basis, then becomes a basis, whether they couple, decouple. There are a lot of this multi, a lot of computational issues, which I'm not talking here. And this is the last part, basically, we have to have this non-locality. So the way, the next step, the way it goes, that we basically, this is a first step. This gives you convergence without H, but if you want to H, so second step goes that we once we build this this once we build this space, this multi-scale space spectral, then we in a bigger domain we minimize energy subject to constraint that it's 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 a one it was is one. So we build we build this spectral space and then we do cutoff and then we pick a basis for each for each coarse grid and then we go build the bases that are in a larger domain like what I show here. So once I build it. So we build a basis in a larger domain here. And this is motivation. Some of it. And, and then what we can prove that the method, the convergence of the method goes H, and this is where we do the cutoff. Because eigenvalues, they go from small to high, and usually smalls are very small. They're like inverse of the, of the contrast. So if I don't include them, this, this, this convergence rate is mean, meaning, meaningless, right? because it's a, I need to make this lambda minus one half order one. So this is why we need to have uh, enough degrees of freedom. <coughs> and this method works pretty, pretty. Uh, this is, for example, for this media, you can see the arrows here are very small. And we, here we show that it, it converges as age and so on. I think uh, this is the last part I, uh, that was, uh, I, and I'm, I, this is about stiff equation, how you can use it. Uh, we call it partial explicit method. We just started, so basically we treat the multi-scale part implicitly, the rest explicitly. So this way we can actually have a, and I will stop with, and there are, you can find all, all this in, in archive, in, 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 in my, uh, my papers in archive. This particular the last one. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> so we have a little bit of time for maybe a couple of short questions. <coughs> so, so yes, please, Professor Smilov. Uh, okay, uh, thank you very much. The presentation was very interesting, but um, I have a question uh, relevant to the model because uh, the for example for these two phase uh, just seepage or uh, filtration problem uh, there is uh, the first derivative time derivative of velocity which is inertial term but we know that there exists also the convective term uh, which is also responsible for inertia and in all your equations, uh, this convective term was suppressed. What was the motivation for suppressing? Because uh, just dimensional analysis, while uh, sometimes it shows that both terms are of uh, the same order of magnitude, or you have some peculiarities. No, I, I guess uh, they basically, uh, the, the, the thing I showed, I, yeah, I, I went through very fast. So we were mostly doing a flow equation. So we did multi-scale basis for flow, because what's happening in this case, you solve, we solve a flow, we come back, solve saturation. So each time it's expensive. We do course in the flow, and we do flow on a course grid. But just for, I mean, the, the equation for saturation, it was uh, basically all convective. But we did not use multi-scale in that. But there we have other, and because we just wanted to show, but in, in, in general, this the idea the way we use it for a convection for convection it's harder because uh, non-local effects stronger but uh, but then you have to play with the time steps and how far it goes but then when we remove this high contrast that helps because if something goes high we remove it and a slow and then we don't have to have too much right there's non-locality so this why also these things we use so, uh, so it was uh, mostly motivated by just the mm, convenience of uh, adjusting just uh, uh, solving so you solve the convective term somewhere else and for 
these uh, multi-grid models you didn't use. Yeah, it. because in this case, I, w I wanted to show how it works for the for the first equation. Uh, then, then I don't want to bring the errors from the second. That's why I'm, I, what I was showing only error that okay. come from the first. But but we have the I mean there are other things that we have actually totally macro scale model for two phase flow. For example, we derive we show that in this case the macro scale model like a relative permeability like the macro scale variable become pressures and saturation mm -hmm. in each block and then for example relative permeability depends on maybe three by three coarse blocks. So this type of thing we have we have an SP papers on on this side of petroleum engineer. Mm -hmm. a pro uh, uh, so basically, yeah, with a two-phase flow, we have fully upscale model mm -hmm. where these relative permeabilities, they, they become huge, but because the relative permeability for the coarse block depends on all the average pressures and saturation on, say, three by three surrounding. And each block has two or three pressures and saturation. So we have written down yeah, this type of macro-scale model. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, any further questions? Okay, then we will continue. Thank you very much again, Professor Refindiev.